In this tutorial, I will show some tips and tricks on how to prepare models for conceptual energy analysis and how you can edit the energy model. I have a context here and I have also created a form concept, this L-shaped building. When you use the energy analysis, then it takes the context into account because it creates shadows and less solar radiation on the new building. The form concept here I created by activating create mass and created this simple form. In this tutorial I will not show that, I will focus on the conceptual energy analysis. First step is to create this mass into an energy model and you do that by selecting it and create mass floors. Then it will not directly create an energy model but that is the first step. So when I click on mass floor, I can select those levels that is created in the project to divide this mass up. So with this mass height, it gives four floors. Further, next step is the enable energy model. It will create the model into a, a conceptual energy model. Next step is going in and look on the energy settings. Also under the tab of analyze and energy settings. In here we can specify which type of building it is. Then in this case it's an office and the location I can specify if I not have done that earlier. The ground plane is the zero level, the surface, the pavement for example. And the reason for it's in here that is because a building can also have a basement so it can be another level that is the ground plane. So in this case there is no basement. These two is not that important for conceptual energy analysis it's related to a rapid detailed object model. This one, the parameter offset, that is this one that is shown here, can create conceptual zones by offsetting from facade into the building a conceptual zone. Typical, this should be between 4 and 5 meters. Next, divide parameter zones. If this is not checked out, then it only one big zone all the way around, as we can see here. But if this is checked on, then it will be more accurate because there will be more zones and of course normally it's not totally open floor plan. There will be some smaller rooms that have internal walls that absorb or release heat. Another reason that is for the simulation of the ventilation, then it's typically divided up in smaller zones to get a more accurate results. In here we can also specify a percentage glazing and a seal height if the glazing is shaded or not, the shade depth. And a good tip here is actually to have glazing shaped because as you can see this model is it's very simple and typical walls are quite thick. So it's actually a good idea to have a little bit shade to simulate the thickness of the wall. But it doesn't have to be 600, it could be like 300 or so. It's also possible to have skylights and specifying the size of these skylights. But in this case, there is no skylights. This part down here with the building services that is more advanced that I will not talk about here. As default, you could have the values chosen here because it's not that important, so to say, when you just compare different form concepts. But if you go in in more detail on the energy consumption, then it's of course important to be aware of which kind of energy system that is used for this project. And the missing one, the conceptual constructions. There is uh, some built-in construction for Vasari that you can choose between. It's quite limited, unfortunately. But again, when you compare, it is not that important to have the right values. Just important to have the same construction when you compare stuff. If you want to look more closely on different U values or R values, depending on which type you are using, you can go to Help Autodesk Vasari and here you will find a list over the conceptual constructions. I use the U values and the SI units, therefore I had to convert the R value by saying 1 divided by R. Seen here, if I remove this one, then I will get the same number as in the Help function here. Further, I have marked and grouped different types of construction because typically there is a relation between, for example, wall and roofs and the roof values is typically lower than the wall values. This can have a huge impact on the energy result if you're using 
very high U value for roof that is not typical. So I have uh, created here in Excel some groups, either the reddish color or the blue colored group type have the right relation typically. Of course you can play around with different combination, but that is the most typical combination. And I have grouped them for both the solid construction and the transparent construction, the, the glazing material, so I know which type I should choose. Back to Vasari again. So when I have specified the construction I want to use, just click OK and OK here as well. And then it will apply these construction sets to this conceptual model. And now we have a conceptual energy model with conceptual percentages of glazing. And if I zoom a little bit in now, we can see the shade here to simulate some kind of wall thickness. So the model is uh, ready for the first energy analysis and you do that just by clicking run energy analysis. And to summarize, first I make sure that my model had mass flaws. Second, I enable the energy model and then I could specify the energy settings for the different constructions, glazing percentage and so on. And then the model can be simulated 